And they say we only review the big movies. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us with the smaller films. We're cinephiles, man. I laugh at your puny blockbusters. <laughs> <coughs> Like that this irony? Is, this is this. <coughs> this is what people do in movies and shows when they're on the way to have a heart attack later in the film. <laughs> oh yeah. As long as we you do that like a few more yeah. times during this review, you know, like by the end when you're in the hospital, like it's all gonna make sense. All right, guys. Well, we're here today to talk about a movie called Mandy. Before we do that, I wanted to mention this is not a sponsored video by Stardust, but we have been posting a hell of a lot on that app. We just love using it. It's free to follow us, the real rejects on Stardust. Um, as a matter of fact, here's John Stardust's reaction of uh, Mandy. So we just saw Mandy. That's pretty fucking insane. Okay, Nicolas Cage is incredible. Panos Cosmatos, amazing director. It's nowhere near as fast-paced as the trailer would have you believe, but it's every bit as fucked up and weird. Okay, the music is amazing. The practical effects are amazing. The cast is great. It's just crazy, sensory, crazy visual. Yeah, so we post a lot on there. We even do like little random 30 second sketches every once in a while that are a total blast to do. There's a link in the description box. Would love it if you guys could go ahead and follow us. Like I said, it's free and we just do it for ourselves. So please follow us there. Anyway, on to this movie. If you guys have seen the trailer for Mandy, <laughs> highly recommend it. Perfectly resembles the film in every capacity. <laughs> yeah. In a weird way, it does. No, it's not misleading. We might have said it in our reaction that it's probably a lot slower than what's being led on in the film. That's the main thing. Is you watch the trailer, and it's not deceptive about what the movie's actually about, but it may lead you to believe that this is going to be a fast-paced experience. <laughs> but it's not misleading at all in terms of its visual style. I did not see... What's it? Panos Cos Cosmatos? Pan Cosmatos, Cosmatos, son it, of uh, George P. Cosmatos, who did like Tombstone and stuff. Yeah, oh, well, you could totally see that. Oh, uh, yeah, when yeah. Russell shows up. Yeah. Yeah. I did not see Beyond the Black Rainbow, which I know you're a fan of. Yeah. And this movie, it's a very artistic revenge horror action thriller. There's a lot of inspirations. We heard a Q&A that was hosted by Kevin Smith, which was a hilarious Q&A. Super awesome. Yeah. Uh, Nick Cage, Linus Roach, and the director of Panos was there. And it was, a, it was a very insightful Q&A. Actually hearing it made the vision for the movie even kind of clearer in my oh, head. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing is when he described the method of filmmaking he uses and also just what his approach to the movie was, I was like, yeah, yeah. You, you totally translated that. Because at the end of the day, this movie is a revenge movie just with a very specific type of personal blend in style yeah, to it. And he way, calls it a revenge movie, the director himself. Because I'm like, do you call this just that? <laughs> but it is. In a way, because like if you look at just the simple action of the story, yeah, it, it's a revenge movie. And then if you look a little deeper like at the themes and stuff, if you want to go yeah. there, there's a lot more going on than your typical revenge movie. And it's a lot more sort of abstract, perhaps, than your typical revenge movie. Yeah, there's a lot of specific types of dreamlike scenes sequences and scenes of visions and whatever and there's even some stuff that cuts the animation that's very brief in the film yeah but it, it's definitely spread out throughout the movie i don't always understand what it is i can't go you know what this is definitely about yeah i get the sense that a lot of it is open to interpretation so while it has this plot line of, and we haven't covered the plot. Nicholas Cage is a lumberjack kind of gentleman who lives out in the woods with his wife, uh, Mandy, who is played by... Andrea Riseborough. They're a couple who's very much in love with each other. And it's not like Hollywood hammed up that's setting it up for things to go terrible Ain't for them. Ain't nothing bad gonna happen today. <laughs> they seem like a real husband and wife that really loves each other. And I think they have great chemistry and it's beautifully told. And you gotta kind of set that up. Yeah, you uh, spend a little time just in their relationship. You spend a lot of time. A decent <laughs> yeah. amount, yeah. Yeah, this is a movie that takes its yeah. time every step of the way. Because you can kind of dissect what the movie's about from the trailer yeah. of this husband and wife, and then there's these cult 
like people you're not exactly sure who they are are they satanist nicholas cage calls them jesus freaks in the movie so crazy like, evil yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're just these insane cultists and uh, manson s yeah they take place in the 80s and uh, you know one night the cult leader played by linus roach he catches sight of mandy basically and then fixates on her they're just driving yeah. past and then he's like i gotta have her and he instructs his uh, disciples essentially to bring her to me <laughs> and then after that night everything changed and you see what's interesting to me about this movie specifically if we're going to talk about plot beyond the style is normally all that is covered in the first 25 minutes of a typical movie yeah uh, that's act one what we describe for you and because and i don't mind going into it because the trailer covers it for what you have to get into for the crazy nick cage stuff yeah that's like the first half of this movie <laughs> that, yeah. that it, this movie is not really about the plot but more about its execution and its style and its themes and what i thought was really interesting was Whoa, we we haven't even gotten into what the trailer pitches is the plot yet. <laughs> yeah, and we're about an hour into this film. That's you know? about the one thing I can imagine maybe affecting the audience score on this is like the movie. I think a lot of people might be expecting happens later into the film yeah. than you would necessarily think. This reminded me more of a '70s movie in the way the plot is structured because you do spend a good half of the movie building up the situation so that when the revenge can go off. It can go off, yeah, you know, and and when it does happen, when when Nick Cage is about to, you know, turn, and by the way, Nick Cage is that crazy actor who does a lot of like really bad movies, and then in the middle, he'll come out with something like Bad Lieutenant or Joe or in this movie. Where he's just amazing. He's, he's amazing. Great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah. in a way, you kind of need somebody with his specific blend of kind of crazy, kind of zany, but also capable of turning in a really solid, lived-in, poignant performance. You yeah. Know? You don't really spend much time with him in the first half of this movie. It yeah. actually feels like... I can imagine, and, and we were talking with a couple people after the movie, too, that you do kind of start wondering, like, when's Nick Cage going to be coming back around? Because he's not really in the first half of this movie. Yeah, it almost... He spent a lot of time with the cult, a good amount of time with Mandy, or Mandy and Nick Cage. Yeah, which... it feels like Mandy's movie for the first half, and then it's Red's movie for the second half. Yeah, so that's why it's, it's interestingly structured, and I actually appreciate that, because it's such a deliberate pace, and that pace, I think, can really turn a lot of people off. Yeah. For myself, I enjoyed it. There were times where I'll admit, in the theater, even though there were times I was really appreciating the pacing, times I was like, I would like this to move a little faster and get to I what I saw in the trailer. Definitely you know? understand that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Especially I, because when you cut a trailer like that, you get so many interesting looking moments in such close proximity yeah. that... Well, yeah. you start going, I want to get to the violence. I want to get to yeah, like, cool to shit. Yeah. I want to get to the chainsaw it's fight. Been a, it's been a while. <laughs> like, I want to get to that. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been yeah. in the for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and the revenge stuff is cool. There's, there is some like pretty gnarly violence in this movie. And there were definite violent moments that garnered a genuine applause from the audience like yeah. some great great moments both cathartic applause and also just things that looked really badass there's some really yeah. great practical effects that they utilize for different gore gags yes. and stuff that are really striking and also going back to older techniques that are kind of cool to see again this is a movie where you need to have a good seat in the theater. Yes. Because a big part of what will make this movie effective for a viewer is being able to be lost in its hypnotic style. You gotta be immersed. So yeah. you can't be in a, just a typical crowd. You gotta have a good seat. And you, I mean, luckily we saw it at the Egyptian and we gotta see it at the balcony, which is a reasonably good seat, except you were like, the guy who's kept guy waiting was for. leaning for the entire movie. <laughs> I, like, I hate me next to anyone who does that or if that person's sitting in front front of me too yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, we're always on infinity war <laughs> and i'm like this guy just keeps leaning forward and all i see is the, the movie in him <laughs> you know? and at a certain point like hey i lean forward sometimes when i'm watching the movie but you have to be aware that you're gonna be in you're somebody's blocking. field of vision. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you just have to be aware if you're leaning that far forward because of this movie's dreamlike execution and for its hypnotic style it requires uh, patience it requires yes. you being able to get lost, and it's important to prep yourself for that, I think, when you watch this movie, because it was very apparent that when you see that this film is such a fresh Rotten Tomatoes score, mm -hmm. when we were done, I, there was more than just us going, this is going to be a really big audience to buy, though. Yeah. yeah. You could even kind of tell some of the people that were in the crowd, because there were moments where Nick Cage being hurt, it was very raw performance. Like, the times where he's being crazy and it garners a, a genuine laugh, where it's like, 
worthy of it. Then there are other times where I'm like, you guys are just waiting for Nick Cage to be funny crazy, aren't you? Yeah, you, you could just totally. tell that there's, there's kind of spread out. Where you're like, when's Nick Cage can do funny crazy <laughs> stuff? I like to see him in B movies doing it. Yeah, know? yeah, totally. I See, the thing for me about this is I definitely can see there being a divide in the audience score for sure. I think the difference that, between this movie and something like uh, It Only Comes at Night or something where you get build this crazy movie that doesn't get crazy for a long, long time. I feel like Mandy has all the craziness you're expecting. It's every bit as strange and weird. I think it's mostly going to be the pace that will take people Yeah, because it's not in any... I don't think it's fun strange ever. Even when it's <laughs> even when it's getting like really violent and stuff. It's kind of cool. It, earn, it garners an applause here or there. It's dark and grungy, though. It is. Yeah. The movie even teeters on the point where when it's getting into revenge territory where you're like, oh, we're about to switch up the pacing. We're about to go like hardcore fast, aren't we? No. You, and you, it <laughs> kind of starts playing like that, but then eventually slows down that, moments, that ride. Yeah. yeah, moments pick up energy, but the film's overall pace doesn't change no, that no. much. But, I mean, if you can appreciate that, I mean, there's some amazing music that goes along that complements it. Like and Johan Johansson. Yeah, yeah, and that's his last score. It's too. beautiful music. Rest in peace. Yeah, I mean, if you ever saw Black Rainbow, that had a very distinct score. <laughs> This is on the more heavy metal side than the synth side, even though there is a good amount of synth to it as well. And this is also a movie that has some amazing cinematography. Like, you can tell it's film stock. I'm pretty sure it's film stock. And there are some both striking images, amazing use of light and yeah. framing, zooms, and even, like, I picked up partway through the film. There are a ton of these really, really slow zooms where they're also moving the camera forward or back yeah, to there's, change there's, the... Yeah, there's one sequence, actually, where Mandy is telling a story from her childhood about her dad. Yeah. And I had to start looking at the corner of the screen because I was like, are we zooming in? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think what they were doing is moving the camera either forward or back because yeah. in those long zooms, you start to feel the room either stretching or, or compacting. Yeah. And it's like, things like that are so fine and they're such deliberate choices that you have to, like, even if you don't love the experience of watching this, I think you have to appreciate the craftsmanship of this yeah. movie and just the feat of having it all come together. <laughs> well, I mean, you're dealing with this very evil, crazy evil, Satan-like cult in a way. Yeah. And the movie's sort of throwing you into the mindset of this drug trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really sensory. It's very expressive. Yeah. You're gonna, it wants to make you feel feel a lot of different things. Yeah, this movie's very much about its atmosphere and tone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who this movie's for, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. Weird art house fans, <laughs> yeah. you know? I'm not sure who's going to like it, because it's not exactly scary, but it's got its horrifying elements. It's not exactly an action movie, but it's got its action. You know, if you like revenge movies, it ain't John Wick or Kill Bill. It's like, it, who is this for? Yeah. yeah <laughs> but it's not made for that. Yeah. I, it's not made for a demographic. It's a very you can still feel it's a very personal film. Yeah, for sure. It's very expressive. Like it, it is the epitome of like art house exploitation in in a way. Oh yeah. And I appreciate that a guy like this is able to work now and to make something that kind of defies yeah, yeah. A, a, a particularly yeah. easy to identify audience or genre or whatever. Because Black Rainbow has a lot of those qualities too, where you're like, this is kind of sci-fi, kind of horror, kind of drama, kind of just abstract and strange mm. and sensory and that seems to be the style he works in but between these two films like there are a lot of distinctions as well and uh i think he makes stuff that's definitely worth checking out he, he reminds me of like a more abstract more aggressively out there nicholas winding reffin if you yeah. want like a touchstone because like I think he's slower than nicholas sl <laughs> slower yeah. yeah it's like i can see this being played in some kind of weird double feature after drive or something like that that's a weird double feature <laughs> but i feel like there's a kinship between filmmakers like that i just think panos is maybe a bit more off the beaten path than a winding record mm. is but overall for me i mean it's definitely one of those films that has to sink in but the more i've thought about it, the more I, again, appreciate just what they achieved. And movies like this usually go down easier for me on repeat viewings. Like, the first time I watched Black Rainbow was a similar watching experience where I was like, okay, not quite what I was expecting, but also a lot of things I was expecting. And it's making me feel a lot of things I didn't expect. And then, you know, you let those things germinate. And I love when movies can bring you back into that where it takes a little time to figure mm. out your thoughts and you don't just know immediately and, and all that, but yeah. 
if uh, if the idea of a revenge movie by the guy who made Black Rainbow sounds like a good idea to you, you'll probably like this. Yeah, I'd overall say I there's too much in it for me that I appreciate it that I can't say I wouldn't recommend. I definitely would recommend it, but I don't know who I'd recommend it to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> to me, yeah. you just I'm recommend like, it to me. Not sure who I who I don't know anyone. I'm like, oh, he'll like it. She'll like. It. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Did you see Mandy? What's your opinion on it? What's your favorite crazy Nick Cage performance? Not the beast! Ah! Put it in the comments below. You guys can subscribe to the Reject Nation. Please click that notification bell. Check us out on Patreon. We got TV show reactions, weekly Q and A's, whole bunch of goodies offered there. And please do follow us on the Stardust app. That's free, and uh, we post pretty much daily on there. So we'd love to have you follow us there.